Hi, everybody. I feel like this lip color is super red. Um, it looked red, but a little bit less hooker <laughs> in the bottle. Um, whatever. It is what it is. This is what I look like today. Um, glowy and hoey up here. What's up, pudding cup down here? Um, I'm getting ready to go to work, so I was bored. I felt like doing my makeup, so I did it. Um, despite the fact that I will be spending the entire evening at my job. Anyways, I am super excited. Yesterday, I apparently became Italian with how much I talk with my hands. No, yesterday I got, guys, literally one of the best compliments I have ever received in my life. So kind of to back up and give you a little bit of a like introduction to the story. One, I've always had a problem being tactful. Um, when I was a kid, my mom often told me like, speak your mind, have an opinion, you do you, boo-boo. Those were not her words. Um, but she's like, listen, you have to know how to talk to people. It's not what you say, it's how you say it. And sometimes how you say it sounds like you're a bitch. <laughs> I was like, okay. Um, and I had some experiences as a younger person um, where I did see that it was how I said things that resulted in problems. So I've grown to, I guess, get better at this, For if we're being honest, passive aggressive. I've gotten really good at being passive aggressive thanks to these experiences. Um, as a result, well, not really as a result, kind of along with that. I have, my train of thought is so off right now. Um, along with that, I've always kind of really been into playing devil's advocate. So regardless of whether or not I agree or disagree with something, um, if I feel people are not acknowledging another side of an issue, I will step up to the plate and defend that other side of the issue. Um, almost always. There are some things I'm not going to... Um, there are some things I'm not going to... Oh, I just got a phone call that interrupted me. And now my, again, my train of thought is so bad. What is wrong with me today? Um, anyways, there are some issues that I'm not going to fight for that I'm not going to justify or try to defend. But um, a lot of things I have no problem stepping up to the plate and being devil's advocate for. Um, as an, I don't want to give a specific example because I feel like that could be taken the wrong way. Because if people aren't... The problem is me taking devil's advocate role has resulted in me um, being kind of mistreated in the past. So um, yesterday I had a meeting with my dissertation advisor, which, by the way, went two thumbs up. Fantastic. Um, it was a really great meeting. Uh, and I kind of I told him a story about when I was in starting in this program how I had done a devil's advocate position for something um, just to kind of be a little bit more open-minded and objective. Like, if we want to look back at, like, events in history and, you know, whatever, we have to try to put ourselves in the shoes of the people who are living it, right? And instead of judging people for their actions based on what we know now, um, I always feel like it's fair to kind of think about well, if you would have been in their shoes, what would you have done? Uh, so I told him about a story when I did something like this and um, classmates and the professor essentially like bullied me about it. Uh, it was an awful mess. So anyways, we were t I was talking with him about that a little bit. Uh, we were talking about my chapter. And for those of you who have not watched my other videos um, on my dissertation... Uh, this second chapter dealt with representation um, 
in several different literary works dealing with travel writing and Africa in the early 20th century. So you run into this problem of how are you going to talk about people and places without it coming off unintentionally racist or problematic. So for example, um, several years ago, a few years ago, I guess, I was in a class and I wrote a paper on a similar topic dealing with Africa. And in the text I was talking about, the people of Africa were being referred to um, as natives. And in my writing of the paper, um, it gets repetitive when you're like, the African people, the African people, the African people, the African people. Um, so I felt that by saying the native population or the native Africans um, was okay because they were the people who were native to that landmass. My professor at that time like tore me a new one and she's like, you cannot say that. That is so wrong. I was like, but why? Um, that's a whole nother video, a whole nother issue. But in, in my chapter, my advisor was like, hey, listen, you say some things that I know you don't mean a certain way, but they can seem troubling. Um, you're going to want to go through and work on your language. And I'm like, eh, I knew that was coming. I knew it was coming because I have a problem. I have a problem just in general. I have problems. <laughs> so I was kind of telling him what I was just saying about how this is my mind. This is my train of thought. This is where my mind is at. This is what I'm thinking, how I'm feeling about this. And why does this have to be a problem? If the author I'm talking about uses particular language and I am recreating that language in my analysis of that person's writing, why is it a problem to use the words that the author used when talking, when quoting even? Um, but it's a problem. And this is where the compliment comes in. So all of this Felicia has problems is leading up to Felicia's big compliment. My advisor, um, he's like, you know, one of the things I really like about you and about your work, he's like, you're ferocious. You just go in there and you just, you, you don't, you're not sugarcoating things. You're not glossing over things. You are not trying to um, be apologetic. He's like, you're unapologetic and you are ferocious. And at the time I was like, oh, thanks, yeah, hey. But in my head I was like, what? So I did that in my cat. I was outside and he just looked at me like. But that's one thing you know, I talked about in videos before about like my self esteem and about coming to terms with like being unapologetically who I am. And there's a piece of my hair that's not in sync with the rest and it's driving me nuts. Okay, we're okay now. Um, so for somebody else, somebody outside of me to acknowledge and see that hell yeah, I'm ferocious. Like, that was fantastic. I felt like it, like, for all day today, in my mind, it's been a mixture of um, Katy Perry's Roar and Sarah Bareilles' Brave <laughs> just, like, going off in my head because I'm a badass. I am ferocious and I'm not going to, and this applies to, like, so much of my life. I'm not sitting back and I'm not letting people tell me I'm a victim. I'm not sitting back and letting myself be a victim. Um, another big thing I've been on a kick about lately is um, the Eleanor Roosevelt quote, no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. Like, I am in control of my emotions. I am in control of the way that I live my experiences. I am in control of my responses and reactions to those experiences. And... I am 100% unapologetically who I am. And that's not always 
the pretty picture of something you can put in a box and stick a label on. You know, I'm not your your perfect grad student. I'm not your perfect whatever. I'm not your perfect anything. I'm not perfect. Um, but I am who I am authentically. I am my authentic self all of the time. I am pursuing the things that I want to pursue. I am doing what makes me happy. I am what makes me happy. And I'm ferocious. So that's what I wanted to share with you guys. I wanted to tell you guys about my greatest compliment that I just received. And that's really about it. So I have to finish getting ready for work. I will see you guys soon. Um, I love you. And go be ferocious. <laughs>